Because motivation doesn't just stay. That's what people don't realize, mm-hmm. right? A lot of people actually wait for motivation yeah. to get started as if it's so, just going to pop up at a... Like it's just going to come up and be like, hey, <laughs> it's me, motivation, wake up. Yeah, but the action is kind of what actually yeah. doing it, just going. It's backwards because the, the one thing that motivates you is results. In this episode, I sit down with my good friend, entrepreneur and fitness coach, Atari Clark who's most famously known for losing over 100 pounds throughout his weight loss journey. Now he's on a mission to help others understand how easy it is to incorporate fitness into your lifestyle. We discuss a lot of different topics from common diet mistakes, how to stay motivated and staying in the gym, as well as what's the difference between fat loss and weight loss. We talk about it all. Yo, you want to make sure that you're tapped in. Stay tuned. Get your notepad ready. Let's hustle to the top. Cool. So we live. We live here, man. All right. So checking in one time, you know what I'm saying? Hustle to the Top podcast, man. Got to introduce my guy, Tari Clark. You know, Had to pull up on the podcast. Yo, Atari has had a phenomenal journey, um, and I think it's only right that he joins the podcast. You know, we're all about unconventional routes to success. Facts. And what better way to showcase that without talking to Atari Clark, man. This guy has a phenomenal story. And so, man, we're going to get right into it, man. How you feeling? First of all, I just want to say thank you, man. I do feel honored um, to be here. You don't got to be flexing and all that, man. Come on now. I see the veins <laughs> popping. <laughs> God, you see yeah, it. I just want to say that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> No, I am honored to be, you know, one of your first guests on this show. Like, you know what I'm saying? I know that's a big deal because I know there's going to be some guests after me. They're going to be big names. I'm going to be like, yeah, I was on that podcast (laughs) before him. So, yeah, I'm honored, man. I feel great. You know, I appreciate the intro. Um, Definitely have a, a, you know, a a crazy story that I I try to share as much as I can. Because I realize as many times as, as I've said it, every time I say it to somebody new, it's a burst of motivation. It's a burst of hope. Like, okay, you did it. I can do it too. So and I, it's crazy too because you know what I'm saying. I was talking to Macy and she saw the post, the before and after, and was yeah. like, "Yo, this ain't Atari." Right. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot right. of people just met you a few years right. ago. A she few years just ago. Saw that. And so, I mean, for for those watching and those who don't know the story, you know what I'm saying? Atari had a crazy transformation, over 100 pounds lost, which is wild to see or to even hear about. So yeah, tell the world how you even got here. Man. How did you get started? Mission. Basically, you know, for, for most of my life, I was always the biggest guy among all my peers. Born and raised in Lagos, Nigeria. I came to the U.S. when I was 18. And so growing up in Nigeria, I wasn't, I didn't consider myself to be overweight. I just couldn't consider myself to be bigger than my peers. And then I came to the U.S. Fast forward, I'm playing football, I'm playing D-line. You know, they're all about eating, getting bigger and all that. And, and the food here just was responding differently to my body. I feel like I gained like a good 40 to 80 pounds like my first two years here. Yeah. And that was partly because I was playing football. And I found myself um, being up to about 280 pounds. And, you know, again, I'm playing football, so it's cool. They're like, yeah, we need you to be big. I'm like, yeah, okay, you need me to be big, bet. <laughs> I'm going to keep eating. And so I, I, was, I was keeping up a healthy diet. And I graduated from high school. I was supposed to play college ball. I'm in some JUCOs. I was like, nah, I want to go to U of H and play D1. I'm going to walk on when I get there, whatever. So let me hold on to this weight. I need to hold on to it. And I held on to it. I got to University of Houston. Needless to say, I pledged Alpha Phi Alpha. Shout out to the bros. You Eight. know what I'm saying? You already know. Iggy. You know what I'm saying? Pledge the greatest fraternity, greatest chapter of the greatest fraternity ever. But I did not walk on football. I just hold it on to all this weight. So 280 pounds quickly became 300 and then 320 because now I'm not as active as I used to be, but I'm still eating all of all this food and still eating like I used to eat. Now I'm at 320 pounds. Um, and so for me, it became a thing of self-consciousness. You know, I was part, you know, I was in a fraternity. I was like, yeah, I want to be lean. I want to have abs. I want to look good, blah, blah. It became a thing of self-consciousness. And then I went to the doctor and they told me about my blood pressure. Um, and he told me that my blood pressure was kind of alarming and I was pretty hypertensive. Getting to the point where I'd be pretty, pretty hypertensive, knowing that it was something that ran in my family, I, that was the first time like I took it seriously. And so that summer, which is where you know DC comes in. Yeah, you went to DC for what was it? I went to DC for a broadcast internship. Wow. It, it was with Washington Media Institute. 
Mm. And it was a broadcast journalism program that where you're paired with an internship and I worked with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. But what a lot of people don't realize is the reason why I chose that because I had an opportunity to get a paid internship in Houston with Ron Green. Yeah, shout out Ron Green. Shout man. out to Brad. He always took care of me every summer. And finally, he was ready to pay me. He was like, I'm going to pay you internship for the summer. What you want to do? I was like, bet. And then this opportunity came up and I was like, dang, I kind of want to go to D.C. And, and do this. But for me, the real reason I really went was because I figured I had come to a point where I was like, all right, I don't want to hold on to this weight anymore. And I realized I needed to do something drastic to get to get it off me. Part of that was me feeling like I needed to get away from my comfort zone mm. and going away from Houston, from all this food and all this, you know, comfort and, you know, hey, let's go do this. Let's go. You know how easy it is being in a yeah. city that you're that you're from and you know everyone. Mm. So every day, every week is something coming up and, you know, your family is here, your girlfriend is here, your boys are here. The calf. Man, the calf, everything. Unlimited buffet. Exactly, bro. Yeah, Just yeah. eating however I wanted. I felt like I needed to take myself out of my comfort zone and leave and come back and be like what's up like you know and I, you came back I'll, I'll never forget when you came back the swag was different the swag yo the amount of people i'm sure that were like it's not you what happened you know what i'm saying so like that window where you really got to lock in yes what were you doing out there though you know what i'm saying because to go um, from as far as activity you were still active you were eating like i'm sure right, right in houston right, but right you were still active. So, like, what exactly. changed what, when you were in D.C.? Exactly. I was playing basketball. Shout out to TJ. TJ was in the gym with us at the rec. Um, shout out to Bobby, Jeff, you know, Bobby Bobby DK. He had us running Rice University and stuff. So, I was very active with the bros hopping and yeah, stepping. Yeah, stepping. Very active, but my diet was crap, like you said. Like, uh, I would eat whatever. I, and, you know, there's a lot of misconceptions with health, like Subway, for example. I don't mean to talk about Subway. But when you go to Subway, I just thought you just think that anything there is healthy because that's kind of how it's advertised. It's yeah. Eat fresh. Right. So I go to Subway, I get a foot long sandwich of meatball marinara and I'll be like, oh, no cheese and light mayo and, and baked chips and Powerade, you know, I thought all these things were good things, but I was just really packing on more calories. I'll go to Smoothie King and get a large smoothie, light eater with all this extra stuff in it that I didn't need. When I got to D.C., I was there for 90 days. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, 90 days, I'm going to do P90X. P90X. Old school. Old school wow. workout program. Old school workout program. That was one of the OGs from Beachbody, and they're still running the game, which yeah. is crazy. Same place, Insanity, and all those other things came from. Um, I was like, all right, I'm doing 90 days, and I'm going to do a no-carb diet for 90 days. Okay, no carbs. While you were in D.C. While I was in D.C. So now I'm um, working out five or six times a week, plus all the walk-in. That's one thing I loved about D.C., all the walking from the house to the bus to yep. the train, yep. from the train to the workplace, from the workplace to lunch, to get coffee. Every, there was a lot of walking. Mm -hmm. So I'm working out five, six times a week, and I cut out all my carbs, literally cut out all my carbs. And so that's, that's rice? Rice. Pasta. Anything white or, or brown, anything even the healthy white. ones. Wow. So oatmeal, brown rice, sweet potatoes, regular potatoes, chips, bread, candy, cakes, anything that has sugar. Anything that has carbohydrate, anything that has starch, I cut that all out. Damn. And so my breakfast would be like eggs and bacon and, and you know, turkey sausage. Uh, my lunch would just be like some vegetables cooked up with, you know, chicken breast. And I'll just like mix all that stuff up. I didn't care. I was just trying to come off this weight. And I, and I found out that my cousin, Brian, he had done a no-carb diet for like a year and he lost 100 pounds. Mm. He did it a dirty way. He would literally go to McDonald's and Burger King and get burgers take off the, the bread and eat everything else, which is what a keto diet is. High fat. That's what the keto diet low is. Low carbs. That's what a keto diet is. It's high fat and low, low carbs. carbs. Yep. High okay. fat, high protein, low carbs. And so that's the dirty way. That's the dirty way. And I saw it and I was like, okay, let me take that and try to do it the clean way. I did high veggies and high protein, uh, low carbs, low fat. Okay. And so that's what I did for three months. And I was literally losing like five pounds a week. Pounds a week? Literally. You got to be kidding me. Went from 300. So I was 320. Started at 3, 320. I did this two-week diet. Shout out to my mom. She did this two-week diet with me. It's called a 13-day diet. Crazy diet. It's for people who are about to have um, heart surgery. Is this the, the liquid diet? It's not thing? even liquid. You eat food. It's just crazy. It's crazy. Like, you you no seasoning. Sometimes you just eat, like, a, a tomato and a boiled egg and spinach. Like, it's weird. 
But my mom did that with me for two weeks and I lost 20 pounds. I was super excited. I went from 320 to 300. So funny, there was a time I used to see 300 on the scale and be happy. Wow. <laughs> Perspective, bro. Crazy, right? So I would lose... see 300 because I was 320. Right. So I was losing 20 pounds. That's a lot of weight. Right. So, you, see... so you're 300. I'm 300. Then I go to D.C. I'm losing five pounds a week, literally. Oh, so this is before you even got to D.C.? Before I got to D.C. That was, oh, where, I, that was where I started. Oh, that sparked it. That sparked it. Ah. That sparked it. Now, now I'm at 300. 300, I'm in D.C. I'm losing like five pounds a week, literally. Like, I'm not, like, I'm literally allergic to carbs at this point. Like, my boss is taking us to all these dope restaurants. I'm like, yeah, can I get that with extra veggies, no rice? They're like, no rice. They're like, it comes with the rice. I'm like, don't bring it. I don't want it. <laughs> They're like, okay, whatever you say. Like, I'm like, okay, I don't want it. Like, it's cool. Like, I was damn near fighting with people because I didn't want carbs. Yeah. So in three months, I'm down 50 pounds, bro. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Remember the first time I went to Urban Outfitters? This is like maybe a month in, like a month and a half in, I went to Urban Outfitters. The one thing I could never fit from there, I could never fit stuff from Urban Outfitter Zara. I could never fit stuff from there. Yeah. And I kept telling myself I'm going to go back and try to wear a tank top. That's one thing I really wanted to wear. Like, remember the era where tank tops came back and jerseys came back too? Yeah, yeah. But everybody was wearing like, like the tanks. G, that G unit. Yeah, yeah, a little after that too. Yeah. I was like, I wanted a tank. So I went in there and I tried on an extra, had an extra large one, one of them by God's grace because they never had anything extra large. I had extra large and I tried it on and it fit. And so I took a picture. I posted it on the gram. I was like, oh, what do y'all think about this tank? And all the comments were like, whoa, 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 what the f***, bro, damn, <laughs> bro, 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 damn, damn. I was like, damn. In my mind, I'm like, yo, I'm still going. Like, I'm not even, I just started. Yeah. Like, I didn't even think I lost that much weight. But the fact that I fit that was a big deal for me. Mm -hmm. um, lost 50 pounds. And then I came back and, and just kind of kept pushing, man. And so what, what was the reactions whenever you came back? You know what I'm saying? I heard there was legit one of my homegirls, Wendy, Wendy uh, Amos. She might not remember. She saw me at, um, we're at the Mosaic, that spot downstairs. There was an event there. Yeah. And she saw me and she introduced herself to me. This is my friend I had known. Didn't even, for, didn't even I'd known her for like at least six, seven years at this point. Wow. She introduced, and I was like, are you joking? She was like, oh my God, it's all right, it's you. Like, I was like, yeah, it's me. Like, she couldn't believe it. My mom saw me and she was like, you look sick. <laughs> <laughs> she thought you were sick. Like, thank that's, you. I was like, thank you. That's like, how drastic the trend. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's know, 50 pounds, right? Blood. Yeah, 50 pounds, bro. Like 50 pounds is like, come on. Yeah. And she hadn't seen me in like a year. And then later when we got home and she looked at me again, she was like, whoa. She was like, wow. She was like, great job. She was like so like proud of me, like for all that. Um, so so yeah, that's became my life. Everybody who saw me, that's all they asked me about, right? How did you lose weight? How did you lose 50 pounds? How did you lose 50 pounds? And I just found myself just talking about fitness all the time. And that's around the same time we started Texas Fit. Mm. Shout out to Cosmo, Trey, yep. uh, Jeff. Yep. They all randomly had started getting on their fitness stuff around the same time. I remember Rise and Run. Rise and Run. Rise and Run was lit. It started around that same time. And we were summer. just like, what was it, 30 days? Come and on, that kind of sparked it. George Bush Park. Mm -hmm. I remember, yeah. Because we had all just gotten these new bodies, right? So we're like, what, what are we going to do? How do we keep going? And, you know, it's crazy. I always wish I could go back to that same hunger that we had back then. Like, it's unmatched. Yeah. I'm talking about, like, we just used to be like, hey, we're working out this park. Come join us. Like, we're, we didn't care to make it a class. We were just like, hey, come work out Pull with up. us. Keep up. We're going to do 20 hills, 20 burpees. 20 lunges, 10 push-ups, 30-second sec uh, plank, four sets. Keep up. And that's it. And that's, that was it. We're just trying to stay fit. And so that also definitely kept me within the fitness world because I had to stay fit. We're doing boot camps every Saturday. Uh, we started at George Bush Park. Yep. Moved to Herman Park. A completely free class. Free. It was free for at least like four years? Yeah, for a while. It was free for a minute. Our clients begged us to charge. Wow. Because it's so much value, bro. Like Our clients were like, hey, we want to pay y'all. Like, Can y'all charge us, please? And we're like, okay, we'll charge you $5 a month. Yeah. We'll charge you $5 a and month. And so that's what it is today. Uh, today's $25 a month. $25 a month. $25 a month. you get to month. come to every boot camp. $10 drop-in. Wow. $10 drop-in. And that's what we push the most. Because like, hey, if you're, if you're around, you're in town. Pull up. Pull up. $10, boom. Wow. $10. And that $10 is just because we bring fruits and snacks. October 8th, we have a, an event with Lululemon. Um, they have a 10K coming up November 13th. Lululemon partnership. Lululemon. Stop big, yeah. Big, big pay partnership. That's a big deal. It's a big deal, man. And they're a great company. Um, they have a 10K coming up November 13th. Okay. And it's right here in Minute Maid. 
Get so, some tickets if you want to. I know you don't really run. Nah, like I'm that not running it. like that. But shout out to my dog Jorge, man. He's a he's the Lululemon ambassador in Chicago. Word. Yeah, okay. and okay. so he he's. Showing us, showing us a little bit of the lifestyle behind the scenes on the gram. And yeah. I'm like, yo, this run club stuff is serious. Run clubs are big, man. We tried to start one. And we're, like, we're like, nah, you're not serious. Like, that's just, <laughs> we tried the first week. It rained. Next week, everyone's like, yeah, we're not, <laughs> we're not doing this anywhere. So shout out to all the run clubs out there. There's a lot of them. I can't even think about the names right now. Yeah, shout out to Grocery Run Club, man, out, out, in, yeah. out in the shop. But yo, so you talk about the transition, 50 pounds down. You know what I'm saying? Were people like doubting you? Did you have any people doubting you? Because, you know what I'm saying? You said your mom like was like, oh, you look oh sick. My God. You know what I'm saying? You know, bro. And then oh. the bros, I already know the bros. You already know bros the story, are ridiculous. bro. And, 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 and that doubt, I, I found that, man, doubt, nothing motivates me like doubt, man. Mm. Nothing motivates me like somebody saying, man, you weak. You can't do that. Like, you know what I mean? It's negative. It's, it sounds negative, but it pushes for a positive, right? Um, so, yeah, no, it's funny. Like, growing up, in Nigeria, especially in Nigeria, we had a lot of, I would say we had thick skin. Everybody made jokes. Everybody called me all the names. And it was just funny, right? Like, I never really took it personally. I just hated the fact that people always had something on me, right? Like, fat jokes are the easiest thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, I just had to feel like, oh, like, okay, you'd be like, oh, you're so fat, it takes you two years to go around the TV, da, 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 or two years to walk around the room. Like, that's not true, right? But it's funny. Yeah, it's always gonna be funny, and that's what I just hated about it. Um, so yeah, my 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 mom, my aunts, my brothers, sisters—they all made jokes about me, man. Um, and you know, I'm not I'm mad at any of them for anything. I mean, you know, the bros when I was like <laughs> when I was in college, uh, when 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 I you know pledged a fraternity, the first thing they told us is the first rule, literally, that um, you know they told us was you can't be sensitive. I'll never forget. I was like, the, I was like, why is that so important? <laughs> and then we got it, <laughs> we got into it, and bros did not let me make it. And you know, looking back now, it was the biggest motivation I could ever ask for. Mm. You know, when they say, "Oh, your friends," you know, you know, some people make comments when they see like you know an overweight person or something, somebody not doing something they're supposed to be doing, and their friends and they have a lot of friends, and people say, "Oh, you don't have good friends." Mm. Why are your friends letting you do this? Why are your friends letting you do this? The bros did not let me make it. Like, nah. they had love for me. Of course, I was your brother, but y'all fired me up every day about being overweight. Like, you know, and it was fun. But that definitely motivated me. And I always remember the story. It was in your room at the treehouse. And y'all were firing me up, man. It was a row session. And I was like, man, what are y'all going to do when I lose all this weight? What are y'all going? What jokes are y'all going to say? Uh. Like, bros were like, damn, you right, man. Once you lose all that weight, it's going to be crazy. But till then, you better get your uh, <laughs> <laughs> bro. Everybody, you pull you pull this out. You already know it's so coming. Like, hey, but till then, you better get your big. But uh, <laughs> boys started going in on me. You know, man, it was funny because I re always remember that moment when I told Burns that I was going to come off that weight. And so that you know, those doubt, of course, there's always doubt. Though you know, I don't think they were like doubting me. It was just them making jokes about this, this situation that I'm in. They're like, hey, look, this is what you're going to end up being if you don't change. Mm. You know, my parents, my, I remember my mom back then would see like a really big person and be like, that's what you're going to be like if you don't change. I'm like, damn, why are you talking like that? Like, yeah. um, and, and it's so, cra it's crazy so though, that, that's on his motivation. Yeah, I feel like people, you could even be on the journey, you know what I'm saying? Like even you in D.C. and like losing what, you said five pounds before you left or 10 pounds before you left, 20 pounds before you left. But people almost wait until you actually do it Yep. to be like, it. oh my, Atari, I knew you was gone. I knew you were going, you could, I knew you had it in you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. Yeah. I don't, I don't think anybody can say that they knew it, but I knew it. Mm. I knew it. But it had to I be a switch. I knew it the whole time, bro. It had to be a switch in your mind that's like. It, 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 I think it's kind of how I do things too. Till now, I, I'll have something in the back of my mind like I'm. I can do this. I'm gonna do this. Even if I haven't started working on it, I'm like I can do this. I remember just telling myself all the time like this is not you. You're not supposed to be this person. Mm. You're supposed to be a more. And it was I don't know necessarily an image, but in my head I knew I was supposed to be a more fit person. So always very athletic, always into sports. So in my mind I'm like, all right, you're going to get there. I don't know how. I don't know when. And one thing that I did, I remember when I was in Calhoun office on the U of H campus, right before the summer, I lost 50 pounds. Every morning I wake up, this is when I knew it was getting to the point where I couldn't deal with it anymore. And that's just the truth about losing weight and, and making a drastic change. It has to get to the point where you're like, I literally can't do this anymore. Mm. 
like and that's like with everything, right? If you're making a certain amount of money and you're like, I can't do this anymore. I need to make money, more money, you go do it. I would wake up every morning. There was, a, there was a mirror right by my bed. So it was the first thing I saw when I woke up. I used to go to sleep with my shirt off, not because of anything, but because I was big and I used to sweat a lot. So I used to go to sleep with my shirt off. So when I get up, the first thing I literally see is myself mm. with my shirt off. And I did it every morning through some form of meditation. I would look in the mirror and literally grab my fat and my rolls and just be like, ah, look at you. Like, mm. this is you. Like, you see it, right? Like, I would just talk to myself like, we got to do something about this. And I did that like every day for a while. And then, you know, it got to the point where I was like, all right, let's do it. This summer is it. Boom. And I think that's where this quote unquote switch came in. They say success comes when opportunity makes meets being prepared. Right. So the opportunity was me going, going to, to DC, DC and me being prepared was me just being fed up year after year after year and not coming off that weight. I'm like, all right, I'm ready now. All right, cool. So let's dive into what most people struggle with in fitness. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because I've tried a ton of times to like yeah. get on a rhythm. Yeah. I think one of the most consistent times were when we were going to the wreck with like TJ yeah. and Chesto. Um, and I just most recently got back into a very good rhythm. Um, but I never understood how much how much the mindset was for me personally. Um, but what, what's your view on what holds people back as far as their fitness journey and really getting over that hump? Um, quitting too early. Mm. Quitting too early. Mean? Quitting too early is the, is the main thing. Um, you know, it's just that delayed gratification thing. I think we we underestimate how much work we need to do to get results. Wow, that's a bar. <laughs> we, under, we underestimate how much work we need to do to get results. To see a little bit of result at that, at that. We underestimate, we always underestimate how much work we need to do to see results. More than often, you're quitting too early. You're saying it's not working. No, you've only done it for two weeks. And even in those two weeks, you're inconsistent. Mm. How dare you say it's not working? <laughs> Imagine looking for a job for two weeks and being like, I can't find a job. Mm. What are you going to tell that person? Right. Like, really? You look for two weeks and you can't find a job? Yeah. Nah, people will look for years. People look for two years, right? So I think, it, I think it's the, the, the self-motivation of being able to continue going to, to work without seeing results, knowing that it's coming. Mm. Knowing that, all right, if I keep doing what I'm supposed to do and trust the process, those results are coming. Mm. And I think that's the hardest part. By the time you quit... You quit a little too early and more than often, if you just waited maybe, I don't know, another week, another two weeks, you would have seen some kind of result that would have given you that next step of motivation. Because mm. motivation doesn't just stay. That's what people don't realize, mm. right? A lot of people actually wait for motivation yeah. to get started as if it's so just going to pop up at a... Like it's just going to come up and be like, hey, <laughs> it's me, motivation, <laughs> wake up. Yeah. But the action is kind of what actually doing it just going it's backwards because the the one thing that motivates you is results mm. that's the one thing that is guaranteed to motivate you is results just like anything else can relate to anything else if you do something and it made you this amount of money you're like oh okay i'm gonna do it again but at that point where it's not making you money you're like ah uh, this this i don't know about this i don't know about this the point you see the results you're like all right let me do it again that's the same thing with fitness like once you see the result then you do it but if results is the only thing that motivates you, that means you have to be willing to wait a certain amount of time to get those results. Mm. And then in that amount of time, you're not necessarily seeing results. Mm. You feel it first, other people see it, and then you see it. Mm, that's, the, that's the way. That's the way it goes. You feel it first. Usually, like, your energy levels get better. You yep. start to feel stronger. Then other people are like, oh, okay, you've been working out? You're like, oh, really? Like, Oh yeah, I guess like you know you didn't even know it. Then you start to see it yourself when you take pictures and you look at your new pictures. Or you put on a certain shirt you haven't worn in a while. Finally, it's fitting. You know, you put on some pants and it's kind of falling off a little bit. It's fitting better. You're like, okay, like it's now working. And that's the one thing that's gonna keep you going. So just push until you get to that. Push until you see the first result, man. Push. Until you see that first and result. It's coming. It's 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 no way it's not coming because as long as you know you're doing what you need to do, it's no way it's not coming, right? Like it's coming. You've been on your diet, okay? You know that you're in a caloric deficit, you know you're not eating fast food, eating late, and you're working out five, six times a week, it, it's coming. It's just a matter of getting the right information, right? First of all, mm-hmm. and then making a plan. 
You mm-hmm. need some kind of plan just with everything else, right? You need a plan. Meal plan and workout plan. If you take out time in the beginning of the week to plan out your meals and mm-hmm. your workouts, all right, today I'm going to work out Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'm going to do 30 minutes of cardio and 20 minutes of hit. Just plan it. Just put it in your calendar like with everything else. Mm-hmm. I think the problem a lot of times is we don't really see fitness as a priority. I can't tell you the number of lead calls I have and people are just like, yeah, no, I'll wait till this is done and then I'll start working out. Too easily, we put fitness on the back burner. Mm-hmm. Way too easily. We'll choose something else over fitness. Your job, mm-hmm. your, your your girl, you know, your this movie night, this party, this meal that you know you're not supposed to eat. Too often we choose something else over fitness. And like I try to tell you know these lead calls, place fitness up there with the rest of your priorities. Mm. And once you do that, it starts to look different. That's good. Yeah, I mean, I feel like fitness is definitely something that people put on the back burner, but I feel like that's almost anything that takes a certain amount of consistency. You know, like you said, they give up too early or, you know, ah, yo, I'm I'm not getting no views on my reels. Like, why am I doing this? Let me just post a swaggy photo. You know what I'm saying? Or, <laughs> or a thirsty photo for the yeah. team. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just being like, all right, let me maybe get a little bit more creative or let me continue yep. to let people know that yep. I'm, I'm in this reels bag or, or creative bag. Yep. And so I feel like it applies to everything that takes time for people to be like, yeah, you know, I, I can't put this as a priority because I got work, I got my girlfriend, I got this, I got that. All the regular stuff that's kind of like mindless. Yeah. Which is crazy to me because truthfully, the fitness play is like... It's the number one thing. <laughs> it's not difficult, but it's, it goes to your point of like needing a plan. Need a because plan. if you don't like... It's been times when I first started getting back into the gym, I don't know what the hell I'm about to work out. Need a plan. You just walk in there like, okay, cool. Let me get on this machine real quick, yep, yep. and then before you know it, it's like, all right, I'm out of here, Yep. and you yep. ain't really getting nothing done. Yep. So how do you get a plan? How do you get that started? Great question. That's where people like me come in. Like, for example, I'm an online trainer. Mm. I have an app with a company called Lena's, and they actually scale trainers by creating an online platform for them, including an app where your plans can be viewed by your client. Mm. You want to be as specific as you can be. So with the plan, the first thing that I get is all your information, your current weight, your goal weight, how active you want to be, how many times a week you want to work out, how many meals you want to eat a day, what are your appetite levels like? You know, it gets really in depth. It talks about where you want to work out, what kind of equipment you want to use. So it's uh, not a generic. It's not plan. generic. It's not generic. So if you work out, let's say it, you got a, a home gym mm-hmm. or maybe just an apartment gym, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's and perfect. you don't have access to like a lifetime or 24 or whatever, then you can get a customized. Based on what you have in your apartment gym. If you tell me, I want to work out only body weight in my living room. I'm like, all right, cool. Give you a body weight workout. Now you have a plan. You're for not, five, five days. Yeah. Different you, workouts. Different workouts for five days. Yep. And you'd be like, wow, I didn't even know I could do all that with my body. By the time you do five burpees, five mods and climbers, 10 jump squats, 10 jump lunges and a plank, and you do five, five sets of that, you'd be drenched, 300 calories. It's all about starting from where you are, are and where you can. Mm. It's all about starting from where you are and where you can, right? Because, again, those excuses come up, and that's life. Something's always going to come up. Mm. That's the misconception we have. We think that there's this magical period where you're just going to be like, okay, now I want to work out. Yeah, oh, I can't. I don't have a gym membership. Um, I, I just travel started, too much. I just started this new job. Yep. Um, you know, once I get more money, then I'll play for I your can't plan. afford groceries. I can't afford this. I can't afford that. But you can do something, right? You're still going to have to eat every day. <laughs> That's just a fact. Yeah. You're still going to have to eat every day. So you can watch how you eat. You can get more active. You can do things like, say, for example, wake up and go take a walk. Wake up and go walking. Wake up and go to your apartment gym. How many of us live in apartments and have only seen that apartment gym like three times? Wow. I know there's a lot of us who... And you, you're paying for it. You're paying for it's, it. It's in, the, it's in the rent. It's in the amenity fees. You're paying for it. So that's why I created the online um, thing because you know COVID ta- taught us more than ever that you don't have to be somewhere to get work done. You can mm. get it done from wherever you are. So you tell me, all right, I have an apartment gym or I have two dumbbells in my garage or I have a full gym. What can I do there? I create the plan for you. You open your app day one. You open day one, work out. You see the video. It counts the rest time for you. It You can log in your workout. I see it on the other end that you did your workout. I'm like, good job. I mark it off. And you keep oh, so going. you can see the feedback too. I see the feedback. I see how, oh, how so which one. It's like you, actual training then. 
it's like you have a trainer on your phone. Wow. Um, so that to me, that'll be the first step is to get some kind of plan. I mean, and if you don't go with that, there's YouTube videos. There's, you know, a lot of influencers that you follow. I think a lot of us have the tools. It's just about doing it, which sounds cliche, right? But it's, it's the truth. It's about finding what works for you. You have to find work, what works for you mm. because you don't want to keep doing something that you don't like, mm. which is why my plan starts with you filling out a long questionnaire of your preferences. Oh, I don't like peanuts that are salty okay you can check that off i don't like red meat you can check it off i don't i want this i don't want that well so here what about this though because we of course live in a a a generation where nightlife and drinking is so so dominant so so, yes everywhere it's everywhere it's almost like all right i go i go out to eat somewhere we go to dinner you're gonna grab a cocktail or two so is that is that something that people can do if they're trying to get healthier or, you know what I'm saying, lose weight, can they still drink at all? Man, or is there specific, a, like, cocktails or liquor types that are better question. for you? Great question. And I happen to be, you know, a mixologist as well, which... I know you be in your mixology <laughs> you bag. You know what I'm saying? Be in my bag a little bit. Shout out Chapman and Kirby. You know, we be doing our <laughs> thing. Going out, of course, is a culture, basically. I call it a culture because when you have fun with someone, when someone says, hey, let's do something, more than likely food and drink is going to be involved. Mm. It's hard to Facts. do something without food and drink being involved. Now, if that's a lifestyle that you live every day, the truth is that it's going to be tough for you to maintain a diet. Now, if you want to live that lifestyle, you're going to be a little more, you have to be a little more determined. Like, if you can figure out what your calorie needs are, mm-hmm. you have way too many apps right now where you can put in your calories that you're eating every day from restaurants like MyFitnessPal, for example. The best way to do it, if you travel a lot, if you eat out a lot, you work a job where you guys are always, you know, getting food catered, is to maintain your calories. And most of these apps, they have all the foods on there. Like My Fitness, My Fitness Pal has every, pretty, basically every restaurant on there, every fast food place. So whatever you eat, if you, if you plug it in, you can, see, you, you can still follow your calories wherever you are. And you can tell when you're out of your, you know, your caloric needs. And you just have to come back and say, "Hey, I can't have this." You you just have to. And so you could, and so is there like a specific mark, like for the amount of calories you're supposed to have? Is it like your body weight, or like I don't know how that how does that work? Because I've heard that with like protein or something like that. Definitely. So it goes with your body your, your body weight and your goal weight. We all burn a certain amount of calories daily, which is your resting. Right? You have Regardless, resting. whether you work yep. out or not, it's you're your burning meta- your base metabolic rate. Yep. Whether you work out or not, just from you waking up, you're burning calories. Going through your day, walk, walking, using the restroom, taking a shower, cooking. Even when you sleep, right? Uh, when you sleep, you burn, or maybe not. Maybe you burn not. a little bit of calories when you sleep, but not really. But really, just once when you you're get awake. Up, once you wake up and get up. Now, that's, now, depending on how active you've been over the years and your current life, that number can either be high or low. This is a cheat code. This is how people get to eat a lot of food, right? This is okay. how trainers, because a lot of times people see trainers eating this food and like, oh, are you allowed to eat that? Are you allowed to eat this? I'm like, calm down. We know what we're doing. The more you work out, the more you lift, right? The more that basic, that base metabolic rate goes up. So right now, my base metabolic rate is probably like 2,500 calories, meaning okay. that on any, on in general, any day, me waking up and going to sleep, going back to sleep, I burn 2,500 calories. That's a good amount of food. Right. Which means that for maybe like for a month or like four months to six weeks, I can eat 2,500 calories and not gain weight and not really do anything else. Wow. But obviously, the less my activity goes down, the more that number goes down. Uh, right? At the same time. At the same time. So it's like a trick. It's like you got to do something to keep that number up. You got to keep an active lifestyle. So once you figure out what that number is, which there's a math, there's a math, um, there's an equation you can use to get it. Or you have these watches that can tell you right now. You can open up your phone. Mm. If you have a Whoop, if you have an Apple Watch, if you have a Fitbit, you can literally open your phone and it'll tell you. I got like the Aura aura Ring. The Aura Ring. Those, that's the modern way to tell how many calories you burn per day. Mm. From there, you can then determine how many calories you should be intaking, right? Because if you're trying to lose weight, this has never changed from time, from beginning of time to the end of time. For you to lose weight, you have to burn more calories than you intake. End of story. That's it. That's it. People just make different ways to do it. Keto, low carbs, you know, vegan, low protein, uh, you know, presbyterian is this or you even know, uh, what is it like uh, fasted fa- like you uh, intermittent, fasting. intermittent fasting. Boom. We're just trying to find different ways to do the same thing. And the reason is because 
of our consumers because of our clients. People keep saying, how can I lose weight and do this? How can I uh, mm. lose weight with my busy lifestyle? How can I do this? I don't like breakfast. How can I do this? Like, ah, you don't like breakfast? You can do it as a minute fasting. Oh, I like breakfast. How can I eat? Uh, I like food. How can I eat and, and still lose weight? Well, eat small meals five times per day. You know what I mean? Oh, how can I eat this? Okay, how about you cut all your carbs and you can eat all the protein you want? How does that sound? Sounds good? Boom, do keto. It's all coming back to try to do the same thing, calories in versus calories out. Wow. At the end of the day. As simple as that. <laughs> it's pretty much that simple, man. And then it goes in depth to if you're trying to build muscle, you're trying to like tone up, that's where you know a trainer comes in and a trainer can help you with the kind of workouts you're supposed to be doing, the reps, the sets, how many grams of carbs, how many grams of protein you should be eating, how many grams of fats. All those things can be calculated on my app. If you go to atarifit.com, A-T-A-R-H-E-F-I-T.com, fill out a form. I'll give you a call personally. We'll go over your goals, mm. and then I can make a plan for you, man. What about, what about supplements? You know what I mean? Because I, you already know the fellas like the protein powder. Yo, I got to get the protein in me right after the gym. You know what I'm saying? I'm, or else the, the workout's going to be worthless. Right. <laughs> is, that, is that true? Like, um, after your workout, you have a window, a 30 minutes to an hour window, where your body is basically craving nutrients, right? Because mm -hmm. you just worked out. You stretched your muscles. You've driven you know, your, your nervous system. There's a lot of things that happen when you work out. You're essentially stressing your body. But it's a good type of stress that produces a good result. So right when after you stress, you stressed it, that's when your body is really craving a lot of vitamins. Not just protein, actually. Protein, you know, BCAAs, um, actually um, magnesium, zinc, a lot of those vitamins, it's really good to take them right after your workout, not just protein. That's a great question. Oh, wow. Yeah, not just protein. Your body is craving all these, these vitamins because you've just stressed it, and now it's looking to recover. It's looking to reconcile that stress for it to make sense. Mm. That's why, that's when that comes in. So supplements are great. The word is supplement. So it supplements what you're doing. It doesn't do any magic uh, for you. So you could just maybe eat. You don't, you, don't, you don't necessarily need supplements. But when you break it down, you see why you need it. For example, creatine. Your body naturally produces creatine. Um, there are some foods that naturally carry creatine, like, like salmon and you know, certain proteins. But when is the last time you went and bought protein and was like, uh, what is the creatine content on this? Or, you know, you don't, <laughs> nobody does that. Yeah. So that's where supplementing comes in because we don't get it enough from foods because we're not thinking enough. Now, if you want to be creative and you want to go into it, you can really go research what foods are high in these amino acids, what foods are high in creatine, what foods are high in, you know, this supplement. And you can really try to get it from food. But we don't have time for that. No, not at all. Nobody has time for that. So that's where these supplements come in. I can actually help you with, you know, whatever your goal is. Because y'all have supplements as well, right? We do Texas have supplements. Fit supplements. Texas Fit, TXFit.net. Go That's on TXFit.net. Click on the supplements. I did not bring any of these, which is silly. But, That's um, dope. yeah, we got supplements. Can we get a promo code, by the way? Yeah, the Can promo code a, is Bootcamp. No, not a, not a year. We're going to do a custom hustle to <laughs> okay, the top. Hustle to the top. Hustle to the top promo code. Thank For you. anybody watching this, man, we're going to get y'all right with the supplements. Get y'all a, a promo code. I want to give away a, a, a Lululemon um, 10K ticket as well. Oh, dope. I got, I got some free tickets for Lululemon 10K. To, to participate? Or yeah, to, so to participate in the run. Those oh, tickets wow. run like 85, 90 bucks, I think. Really? Yeah. It's, it's dope, man. It's the first time they're doing it in Houston in like forever. I think they've, they're the first time in Houston ever. Yeah, I've yeah. never heard of any Lululemon activity. Exactly. They have oh. one in Atlanta, which is pretty big. So if you pull up and say you heard me on Hustle Nation... I got a ticket for you to the race, man. And make sure you make sure you pull up. Don't waste it. All right, cool. So tell me, I mean, you're talking about this this Lululemon run. Wh when is it again? November 13th. November 13th. So it's like by the time this comes out, it's probably a month away. Right. Right. Let's exactly. say that. And so if I I hate running, so what would you say to somebody that wants to get into it more and that can't run? three miles, can't do a 5K, you know what I'm saying? So we actually have a training plan, but of course, by the time this comes out, it'll be kind of late to get on the training how plan. Long, how long is the training plan? It was a 10-week training plan. Okay. So you can, you can get on that whenever, though. I can send you, know, you, can just send, I can send you a PDF. Okay. Get it whenever. There are a lot of training plans that are actually good. Nike Run Club has so many training plans, and they're so good with it. Like, if, you, if, you're, if your goal is to run a marathon, they, they have a training plan for that. Wow. Also, and they're so really good with it. But... 
it's so funny we have this conversation because I was talking to my boy Neil. He ran track in high school, and we go running uh, at Memorial. We ran running this morning, and we're talking about starting off and how people, you know, um, how hard it is for people to start off. And he was like, "Start small and start with time, not distance. So make time goals at mm-hmm. first. Like, say I want to run for ten minutes today." Not one mile, not two miles. That's a little overwhelming. Once you start to look at the miles, it's like three miles. Oh, my God, that's a lot. Like, it's a little overwhelming. Start with time and see how much you ran in that time. So if you say, I want to run for 20 minutes today, and I want to see as much as I can run in 20 minutes. If you say, if you get, like, say, a mile in 20 minutes, next time you run, you want to get a little over a mile within 20 minutes. Mm. Next time you run, you want to get a little over, you know, 1.1, maybe 1.2. And stay within that time. There's no competition, right? Because it's you. Who you it's just time. You're not going to run in the Olympic race. Like, you're not trying to run, you know, a 100-meter race. You're just trying to get better. Like, why are you trying to run, right? Running is therapeutic. It's one of the greatest cardios. It's the fastest way to get your heart rate up. I don't run it. It's very good for your endurance. It's good for camaraderie. Like, to me, it's the best cardio. So once you figure out why you want to do it, start small. Start with time. Get some friends that want to run with you. Very important. Very important. I was in Italy uh, last week. Sly flex. <laughs> That's too much of a flex. I'm also and y'all going, were turning up out there, though. I was like, yo, was what Como. is Atari doing in Italy? Like, I was in Como last week. Um, Como, Lake Como. Yeah, that's a lake in Italy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Como, Como. And I met these guys from Australia um, during the 50s. Okay. Caucasian guys during the 50s. And there's one of them, he, he has a daughter playing basketball in New York. He couldn't stop talking about it. It's crazy. Um, but they rode their bikes 600 miles from. I think England to Italy, crazy, right? And so they're all fit, whatever. And I, I had to ask him, like, what's the secret? Like, how? Like, how do you do this? And the only thing he said, the one thing he said was, find friends that are in the same mindset as you. Come on, man, that's a bar, dog. I thought he was about to say, um, you know, work out this, to, bro. These guys don't even lift. They don't, they hardly lift. They're just really into cardio. I thought he was about to tell me something about carbs and protein and calories. He said, find friends that are in the same mindset as you. Wow, and that goes for anything. And that's, and, and you know, fitness is so crazy because it helps me understand life. Wow. Whenever there's something else that I'm trying to get and I find myself getting frustrated, I'm like, what would you tell your client right now that's complaining that they haven't lost weight in three weeks? What would you tell them? You would tell them, oh, be patient and wait. So why are you not understanding that? It helps me to understand everything else. Wow. And so he was just like, me and my friends, we meet up and we go running. Me and my friends, we meet up and we go to run 10 miles. We don't meet up and go drink and, you know, smoke hookah. Like, no, no offense to that, but he was saying that's what they, that's their priority. They meet up and they do that. It's funny. One of the things I like to call women out for this because it's one of the things women say is, oh, you make time for what you want. That's what women always say when, you know, you don't call them back or that's the truth. It's very true. It's a very true statement. I, I just want to check off my calendar every day for the week knowing that I worked out. Mm. That's all it is. I'm just trying to check off my calendar. Right. It's not about losing weight. It's not about gaining muscle. It's not about my birthday coming up. I just want to check off my calendar. It can be that simple. I'm not going to lie. That's definitely what, what shifted it for me. Is And I'm in like a, I would say maybe like three to four week run of like consistently going to the gym. Oh, nice. And it's just off of having to check it off. You know check what I'm saying? Like even the Apple Watch, like I've never really used it until this this run that I'm on. And it's Closing like, I want to close my damn rings. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, my girl look at me and be like, why are you staring at your watch? I'm like, it's 8 o'clock, and I'm like 100 calories away. Like, let me go. You know what I'm saying? I got to hit my move goal. You know what I'm saying? So just being able to check it off is motivation. You have to find a way to motivate yourself every day. Mm. That, that is what I'll say about motivation. And I feel like that's probably giving you a, a good routine to get into like the even the social media element of it and like being creative and okay cool like you can apply that same mindset to creating content and being on a rhythm of checking that off Facts. and being like okay cool like i just need 30 minutes in the morning though every creator says creating content in the morning is the best time because Ooh, it's before anything it's else time. it's your time you know what i'm saying and just like you said like the world is coming at you throughout the day and they don't give a damn if you haven't created content. They don't give a damn if you haven't hit the gym yet. They want what they want. And so I think that's that's mm. definitely a dope way to look at it is probably all of the important 
things on your list yep. you need to get done in the morning. And I'm, I'm, I'm curious, though, because you definitely are creative. You just talked to me about the yep. skit that y'all are going to do, yep. and y'all will see it soon. But how do y'all stay creative? I know for you and our time in ADAMU, like, what, what, what makes you want to still be creative? Yeah. Content. Just like I talked about, I know that people follow influencers and people really rely on things like Instagram and TikTok for motivation. So it's really a responsibility on, on us influencers, like even you, like really a responsibility for us to keep putting out that content, knowing that people need that for motivation. Mm. And knowing that one time is not enough, we gotta keep posting. Uh, shout out to Rochelle, man, my, my manager. She's always on my butt. Like, she's like, you gotta keep posting, Atari. Like, people don't remember these things. Like, you gotta keep posting. So that definitely pushes me to keep being creative because how can I find another way the hundred time to say the same thing? <laughs> how can I be more creative? Okay, today I'm gonna talk about dieting. Okay, within dieting, today I'm gonna talk about food swaps. Okay, within food, today I'm going to talk about this. Okay, one, the people who might be watching you, mm -hmm. what my audience is, you know, this, you taught me a lot about it as well. Figure out your audience now. What do they want to see? How can I attach them emotionally, right? Mm -hmm. if, if you're my audience, I feel like it's people that want to lose weight, and that's people I know how to reach out to. So when you wanted to lose weight, Atari, what are the things you struggled with? Yeah. You know, you know, did you struggle with dieting? Did you struggle with making meals? Did you struggle with meals you can do on the go? Did you struggle with um, how much cardio you need to do? These are questions that I've answered because I've been through the process by myself. So the content is really there. Yep. It's just about me doing the work. That's it. Content is really there. It's just about me, you know, sitting down and thinking about my consumer and my client and being like, okay, what can I put out for, to make this journey easier for these people? Same way I follow you. Every time you post real ideas, I'm like, damn, that's a great idea. I'm going to do that one. Or you follow somebody like, you know, Aaron Your Leisure about money. They're putting out great content that they know that millennials and people like us think about every day. And it's in a way that people we can, can digest. digest it, right? Because, the, bro, there's, ten, there's tens and millions of fitness professionals and, and fitness gurus um, and even social media content gurus, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But the the digestion of it, how can they digest it? How can they relate to it? How can they laugh Very while relatable. learning? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like the amount of reels I be dying <laughs> that you create, yo, if y'all don't follow, bro, like y'all need... <laughs> A-T-A-R-H-E, yeah. follow your boy. You will die laughing and then be like, all right, I need to get in the gym. Man. You know what I'm saying? And I get most of my leads from those funny videos. Really? Yep. No, yeah. I get most I get most people who want asking questions from the funny videos because I always try to reconcile it to a point at the end. Mm. Right? You start off with a joke to get their attention, and then the caption usually then explains what really the video is trying to talk about. Um, so, yeah, with, 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 with motivation, just... Find something to motivate yourself every day. If you have to check something off, what is it that I can do to motivate me to keep going when I get tired? Um, and, and a lot of people have this misconception, and this is one of the last things I'll say with trainers, that we're, we just stay motivated, right? Mm. You really think that we just wake up every day and we're just like, yes, work out, let's do it, right? And I wish that was true. There are days where I sit outside the car at the gym for like two hours. Before wow. I drag myself inside and finally get on the stair climber. And then maybe like 20 minutes in, 30 minutes into the stair climber, I'm like, okay, all right, let's do this, man. We're here now. Now two and a half hours are gone and I haven't even started my workout. Mm. That's me literally contemplating like, bro, you know you can really just go to that Chick-fil-A and just get a burger and just, you know, just chill on the couch. Like, bro, you've been working out for how many years? Like, bro, you're good. Like, mm. It's really me just contemplating, like, I'm on my phone. Like, I'm just like, I don't want to do this, man. And so you even go through that. Man, that bro. And guess what? It's times where I don't make it in the gym. Wow. This happened to me recently. I didn't make it in. Hmm. I drove, and I sat outside 24 Hour Fitness in the, in the parking lot. People were passing me. I was looking, 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 looking. Never got in. Drove home. Went home. I think I ate some crap. Took a nap. Woke up. Felt like crap. And then I finally went to work out. Wow. Because I had to kind of make myself feel like crap. I ate. I can't remember what I ate. I ate some BS. I went to sleep and I eventually woke up. And then I went to work out like at 10 p.m., 11 p.m., something crazy like that. So there's no motivation just waiting for you when you wake up, man. It's, I wish it was like that. It's not like that. 
Find friends that are into it. Mm -hmm. Very important. Or pick the friends you have now and start to do things with them together. Start to create a calendar. Start to create, plan your meals for the week. Am I going to cook my meals? Or am I going to get it from Snap Kitchen? Am I going to get meal prep? What am I going to do? Once you can plan that out for the week, at least you know you're good from Monday to Friday. I got my meals from Monday to Friday. I have my workout on Monday to Friday. I'm going to try my best to put it in so that at least on the weekend, maybe I can chill here and there. You know, you create a time. Maybe you want to do this for three months. Get it in. Three months is always a time I tell people like to go in. Three months. Three months. 90 days. 90 days. Man, look, this is what I want to know about. Last thing is cheat meals. Ooh, okay. Tell me about cheat meals. You know what I'm saying? Because I, it's always a common misconception that, like, you got to go cold turkey. Yeah. Or you hear the opposite of, like, cheat days. You know what yeah. I'm saying? People are like, all right, this is my cheat day. Saturdays <laughs> is my cheat day. I'm eating whatever I want. You know what I'm saying? What 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 is the real answer to enjoying somehow within the diet or within the lifestyle change? I look at burning calories like making money. Mm. Whenever I see those calories on my watch or my phone, it's like money. It feels like money to me. It's crazy. So if you look at calories like money, everything will make sense. Mm. What do you mean? So when you start working, you start to save up your money, right? And you go... Are you, you're not supposed to splurge, right? You can't just go buy some Gucci shoes. It's $1,000. It's got your first paycheck. Mm. <laughs> Why are you going to buy some Gucci shoes? It's $1,000. <laughs> You've used up your two weeks. Yeah. And now you can't pay your rent. That's how I look at calories. When I see them calories, 1,000 calories, 2,000 calories, you're saving up. You're saving up. You're saving, saving, saving. Now, if you saved up a little bit, you don't want to spend it quickly, right? Yeah. I don't want to go get a burger, <laughs> spend it all on one burger because I just did this workout that was three hours long and I burned his calories. Now I'm going to go spend a burger. No, I'm going to go spend it on some broccoli and some low calorie thing. I save my money, save my calories for the weekend. That's how the cheat meal works. If you're able to save up enough during the week, i.e. if you're able to do good, during the week, then a cheat meal actually helps. Because if you're eating clean, it, helps. it does. It could. If you're eating clean, very clean during the week, you're working out, doing everything, then your body, you introduce these, this greasy food, right? This, this, this food, and your body's like, whoa, 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 whoa. What is this? We've been eating clean this whole week. What is this? Oh, no, we got we to get to work. So that actually gets your metabolism going again because your body's like, all right, now we see that you've, you've eaten some BS again. Let's get back to work. Now your body, sometimes you eat a cheat meal, you wake up the next morning, and you look, you see your abs and my muscles be popping. I'm like, oh, snap. Yeah. It's because it actually helps to refill those insulin levels, you know, those glucose levels that would drop probably during the week. Actually helps to refill those. And then as long as you're doing it strategically, like I said, you save up enough, you can spend it. Mm. If you didn't save during the week, if you didn't work out, you didn't diet, why are you spending it on this? You don't have the money. You can't afford it. Right. You can't afford it. Wow. When you do it right, you save up during the week, burn your calories. Now you can afford it on something nice during and, the weekend. And so cheap meal, not cheap Cheap day. meal, man. You can't have a cheap day, man. Come on. Because boys will go crazy. They'll go to, uh, go to the funnel bar for breakfast. Oh, shout out to funnel bar, man. That's my <laughs> favorite cheap meal. Go to funnel bar, funnel bar in the morning. Again, again, it depends on who it is, right? Like, mm. like they're fitting, they're, they're guys like, like guys like TJ, bro. They're guys who lift. When you lift a lot of weights, you burn a lot of calories. Okay. That increases that basic met, base metabolic rate we talked about. Lifting. Lifting, a lot of lifting, man. Because you Cause, burn, when you lift, you burn, you lift in this thermogenic, you burn calories after uh, as well. Because I'll, I'll remember like lifting and I have like leg day, for example. And then I come home Hungry. after the shower, I'm still sweating. Like, I'm like, you go out later and you, you're taking a shower and you're like, damn, I'm sweating again. Yeah. Yes, man, you're still burning calories. Even though I didn't do a lot of cardio, you're still burning calories through lifting. That's why people like people like us that lift a lot, like people those who work out and burn a lot of calories, sometimes we go ham, man. We just go ham, like have a whole cheat day. But again, again, it goes back to the topic. If you just started a job and you just started saving, why are you already talking about it, about getting some Gucci shoes? <laughs> if I haven't even made you your workout plan, it's day one, and you're already talking about a cheat meal. It's not even Tuesday yet. Remember when they were doing a little little Mister and little Mrs. Remember yeah. doing that? Yeah. I made memes. one that was like little Mister cheat meal on the Monday. 
<laughs> little Mister Cheat Meal on a Monday. Like, calm down. Yeah, just get through the week. Yeah, it's like it's like get through the week, and it's like again, again. I don't want to address this. Is this camera on me? Is this camera on me? <laughs> R. Kelly. R. Kelly. That's stupid. <laughs> Stupid guys. That's stupid guys. Is this camera on me? <laughs> That's stupid. But it's like people see trainers eating stuff and they want to quickly. And I think they do it in like a judgmental way, right? Mm. Are you supposed to, oh, Mr. Healthy, are you supposed to be eating that? Oh, are you, is that on your meal plan? I made a video about that too. Is that on your diet? And like, damn, can we live? Mm. And it's because, man, you don't know the work that we put in to be able to eat that stuff, man. That's a bar. We put in a lot of work to be able to eat. I started this fitness thing because I want, I like to eat. I started doing fitness because I like food. I'm like, all right, you like food, so let's at least lose this weight and, and be healthy so that we can enjoy it every now and then. Mm. If we can't do that, then why are we doing this? If I can't, if we can't enjoy this healthy food, why am I doing this? Why am I? It's not so, like it, yeah, it's not like you're in competition mode. Yeah, you, you've done competition, and I've done competition before. And and the people who do competitions, when you see them cheat, you're gonna be like, whoa, like because you know we we've, we've been through that. Now that's not for me to make an excuse and say I can eat it however I want because that's not true. Whenever I do that, I gain the weight back. My you know starts to show my abs, starts to show my body. Like I gotta get back to it. But again, that's why we do it, so we can enjoy those foods. Mm. So when people see you eating that food and they're like, are you allowed to eat that? Can you eat that? I'm like, no, can you eat that? <laughs> I can. Because <laughs> you, you, you've built up your... You just started working out. And that's the thing. Like When you first start, that's why I say the three-month thing. When you first start, you got to go in, just like anything else. When you first start, you can't be talking about, oh, can I have a cheat meal? Can I do this? Can I do this? Because you just started. Let your body get used to it. Let your body at least go a week or two and then talk about cheat meals or cheating. Then later on down the line, your body starts to, you start to burn a lot more calories. You can start to enjoy yourself a little bit more because there's no point of doing it if you can't enjoy yourself. Mm, that's a bar. So here, here's what I want to, la, last question or last <laughs> topic is, uh, right, we, we always problem. hear about women who, you know, I've heard it a lot. Mm personally about like, oh, you know, I don't want to lift, you know what I mean? I want to just, or I just want to do legs, or I just, do, just want to do squat challenges, or like, I, I just <laughs> want to, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to lift too heavy, because yeah. then I'll look like a man. Yes, You know yes, what I'm saying? Yes, so yes. What, what's, your, what's your take on that? How does that work out? Like, is it, is cardio more important for women, or like, it, should they not lift as much weight? Man, everybody should be lifting, man. Everybody should be lifting. I don't care how old you are, how young you are. Well, obviously, to some limit. But everybody should be lifting because lifting is what... Your bones are attached to your muscle. Muscle is attached to your bone. Think about your bone like this. This is your bone. Mm -hmm. There's a muscle like a web on top of it. So your muscle is what moves your bone. It has to be attached to it for your bone to make any kind of movement. So when you think about that, you, want, you always want your muscles to be in the best state. When you think about that, if your muscles are strong, that will help you as you get older. Like, you know, you start to have knee problems and stuff. Your muscles is what's going to move all these joints and all these things around. First and foremost, you know, lifting improves your quality of life, improves how you move and stuff. So you want to lift for that fact. Now, with women, it's a, it's a big misconception. Yes, there's some women whose um, metabolisms are probably faster than others. But, you know, it's kind of funny to me when women say, oh, I don't want to be swole. And we just did one workout. We just did one, one set of bicep curls. Oh, my arms. I don't going to be the Hulk. <laughs> I'm like, no offense. But if you knew the work it took to look like that, I, you know, I'm not saying you don't really have the work, that, work ethic. You worried about something that's not even going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> because you're not even going that hard. Those women that look like that, and kudos to them. I always want to, I always give them a shout out, like women that do competitions, because too often you qu you you're quick to hear someone say, "Oh, it looked too muscular," as opposed to being like, "Damn, that's amazing. Mm. What kind of work did you do to look like that?" It takes a lot for a woman to look like that, because women naturally have more body fat than men. Mm. They actually naturally have like 10 percent more than men. Wow. Um, so you want to lift, obviously, if you have an area of your body, like for example, you feel like your shoulders are too broad, just lift lighter, lift lighter weights or, you know, just leave, leave, don't lift too much in that part or use like body weight exercises. And then, you know, for other areas like your legs and stuff, make sure you're lifting. You want to lift so that you're burning fat. 
um, you know, I, I said fat, we'll yeah, fat versus, versus versus weight loss versus weight loss, fat loss versus weight loss. What's the difference? Because there's people that that probably look fit, exactly, but are like super unhealthy, right? Right, right. You want to try to make sure that you're when you're losing weight, then most of that weight is coming from fat loss. Fat loss is where toning comes in, right? Mm -hmm. So weight loss, I like to give this analogy. Like if you have a balloon and you empty the balloon of water, it goes from big to empty, right? Mm -hmm. And that can happen like in a second. Yep. So that's losing weight. That's losing weight. You just lost weight. You went from big and you reduced in size. Losing fat would be me taking the same balloon and then maybe cutting it a little bit on the sides, cutting it and changing the actual shape of the balloon and then you fill it back with water. Now it's a different shape. At first it just went from this to empty. Now you're going from this and you're cutting the sides, using the scissors and cutting it up and now it's a different shape. That's the difference. Weight loss, you're just reducing your size. Fat loss, you're burning fat so that your muscles can actually show. Mm. When I first lost 50 pounds doing no carbs, I lost 50 pounds, but I looked at myself, I was like, why you don't have no abs? Why are you not, re you're not really swole though, but you, I mean, your clothes are fitting, but you're not really swole. And I, to and I told myself, yeah, I don't really want abs. I just want to lose weight. After I did all that work to lose weight, I was like, nah, I want me some abs. I want, I want the whole deal. I'm not going to do that whole work, all that work just to lose weight. And so that's when I started learning about fat loss and I realized I actually had to eat carbs. Wow. Shout out to Sonny and Brian with Six Pack USA. They were the first ones that put me on a So you plan. actually had to eat carbs. I was scared, bro. Imagine coming off six months of not eating carbs with great results. <laughs> 50 pounds. And you're telling me I have to eat. I'm an advocate against carbs. I'm carbophobic. Like, I'm not touching At any the carbs. Time. Even after it stopped. Because after I lost 50 pounds, it plateaued. And it stopped. Wow. I was still trying, still trying. I remember Zadia. Shout out to Zadia, uh, Delta Sig, Zeta Sig. She was like, Atari, you need to eat carbs to burn more fat. So you want to make sure that you're burning fat. And that's where lifting comes in. That's where a balanced diet comes in. Eating enough protein. Eating enough carbs. You want to make sure that you're lifting weights while you're losing that weight. Mm. So that you're not just losing weight. And that's, you know, skinny fat. That's where skinny fat comes in. Yeah. Because you're lean, but, you know, you still kind of have some some skin hanging off yeah. and some some fat under there. It's because you didn't focus on fat loss. You focused on a fat diet that mm. you lost weight, 50 pounds in, in, you know, two weeks or in two months. That weight usually comes back because it was just weight loss. A lot of that is water weight. Mm. But if you take your time and go through the process lifting. It takes time. It takes weeks. Mm. It takes weeks and it takes patience. It takes you willing to fall off and starting back up. Mm. I think the biggest factor with fitness is actually patience. Patience. I think it's patience. You know, you have consistency. You can work out for a week, right? And diet for a week, like clean, right? Yeah. And you're going to be like, yeah, I did that for a whole week. You'll feel yourself. That's consistency. You were consistent for a week. Mm -hmm. You can do it again for two weeks. Yep. It's consistency. You can do it again for three weeks, right? Now, say you do it for three, four weeks, five weeks, and you're going in, something happens, and you fall off. You fall off for a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks. Now, that is consistency, right? Consistency failed. Now, patience is where you pick up mm -hmm. when you fail from consistency. Mm -hmm. Patience is what picks you up from that point where you fell off and now you have to start over. That's patience because it's patience that's going to say, all right, calm down. I know this took six weeks before. We've done it before. Now we got to do it again. Most of the time, that's the hardest part is mm. getting back on your feet because you know how hard it was the first time. And now you've gotten that glimpse again of the lazy life. You've, you've gotten back to just not working out, waking up, eating whatever you want, waking up at whatever time, sleeping whatever time. Who could this? You know, alcohol, this, that, that. It's tough to get back into that mindset. That's where patience, come, patience comes in. And now you're, you know, you're taking your time. You're starting over. You're mm. doing the right things that you did again. So I think patience is actually the most important factor on top of determination and consistency mm, and almost at the same time giving yourself grace right because it's easy to beat yourself up and be like god i really i really wanted to i should have went to the gym you know what i'm saying i sat in a parking lot and i ended up going home and eating a bunch of crap instead my trainer called off i was excited about him calling off for the day you know what i'm saying so i ended up going home and just 
tearing it up and giving yourself grace though and forgiving yourself forgiving yourself for taking that break you know what i'm saying and being like it's so it's it's not what i wanted it's okay but it's okay it's okay just get back get back in there yes man that's a great point man because a lot of time we beat ourselves up we forgive everyone except ourselves mm. you are the hardest person to forgive is yourself Easily forgive everybody, but you want to beat yourself up every day about the same thing. Beat yourself up. Why? And, 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 you know, another topic, which we probably have to do in another whole interview, is like the whole depression and anxiety thing, right? With fitness. And it's like, that really hinders your fitness journey, right? But people don't realize that fitness can turn that all around. Mm. I like to tell people that whatever is weighing on your mind, whatever is making you anxious, whatever is making you depressed, whatever you're thinking about all the time, you can still think about those same things while you're on the treadmill. <laughs> just, no, I'm not saying don't stop thinking about it. Just don't do it on the treadmill while you're working out. Yeah. And you start to, those thoughts to, to kind of start to start leaving your mind. Because if you have 300, 315 pounds in front of you that you have to lift 10 times, I'm not really thinking about something that's making me depressed, right? I'm more worried about this workout that I got to finish. Mm. This is bigger than whatever I'm worrying about right now. Mm. And that fitness can really be that substitute for whatever is causing hardship in your life because mm. fitness is hard yeah. in itself. Yeah. So when you focus on that, it kind of puts everything else on the side. And then um, I think it gives you control of your thoughts too. Yeah, you're able to actually think. Yeah. Because think about the the day-to-day -day of errands. and Man, da -da -da. you have this one hour to yourself to work out. It's, it's your time. Mm. It's your time. I tell people, I, I've been struggling for years to actually like take out time to meditate. I think the only time I meditate is when I'm running. Wow. I asked somebody the other day, I was like, is that possible? They're like, yeah, there's no rules to meditation. That's the only time I'm able to focus on one thought, go through talk, thoughts, the good, the bad, the ideas. Sometimes I bring up my phone, I start running, I'm writing down ideas and I'm just flowing. I'm like, wow. That's one of the times I'm actually at most peace. There's nothing else, right? You have to finish this run. You're not going to stop and mm. go worry about your girl that broke up with you or this thing that's the, that you're trying to get. Like, no, I've got to finish this run. And while you're doing that, you're still thinking about those things, but you start to come up with solutions. You start to come up with ideas. You start to come up with other things you can be doing instead of thinking about that stuff. And, man, I wish people would t tap into that therapeutic aspect of, of fitness, if anything. Wow. If anything. That's powerful. It is. Yo, it is. part two is going to have to happen. Have to have part two because we, we got too much juice. We got too much juice, man. I appreciate you for checking in on Hustle to the Top podcast. You already know what it is, Atari. Unconventional routes to success, man. My guy lost well over 100 pounds. Phenomenal journey, phenomenal story, and even a better individual, man. Please tap in with him, Atari, A-T-A-R-H-E, on all platforms. Yes, and, sir. Uh, let everybody know about the online Man, atarifit.com, A-T-A-R-H-E-F-I-T. If you go on my website and do a lead form and say you are with Hustle Nation, I have a discount for you. Atarifit.com, tap in. Is this camera on me? <laughs> Is this camera on me? <laughs> tap in at Atari on Instagram. Boot camp every Saturday at Herman Park. Texas Fit by, by Miller Theater. And then we have supplements on texasfit.net as well. Follow me, man. I, I, I'm going to try to keep the motivation coming for y'all. Let's get it. All right, that's a wrap for this week's episode of Hustle to the Top Podcast featuring Atari Clark. I told y'all the episode was action-packed and filled with so much game from the diet tips to how to stay motivated, all of the game. All the links to all of the details that we talked about in the episode are linked below in the show notes. So go ahead and get started. Give us five stars on all platforms. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm going to see you next episode. Let's hustle to the top.